see what that's saying. Yeah. Lord, turn your Bibles this morning, please, to the book of St. John, and let's look at chapter 14, and we're going to read verses 16 through 20. St. John, chapter 14. Who 
who has to go down to the school and when they say, well, I don't know where his daddy is, but I'm daddy and mommy. And you're going to act right by my child. Thank the Lord for that. But nonetheless, when daddy is missing, unfortunately, our children are subject to what I would call social bullying. Isn't that something? Social bullying. Because daddy is simply just missing and absent. He has left us. I need you to know, and I want to talk to the body of Christ this morning, that the world has decided to treat the church as if we don't have a daddy. They have backed us into a corner and dared us to come out. Churches are scared now. Yeah. As if we don't have a daddy who promised All right. I will never. <laughs> They're going to hate you, but I will never leave you. And they are pressuring us and they are, uh, 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 are persecuting us. And in a sense, I believe that they are bullying us and they're telling us, you better sit down and be quiet. Because we don't care what your father told you. He's not here. Oh, I wish I could help somebody. You can't see him. I ain't never seen him. You can't prove it. I'm going to slap you around. Whatever you do, we're going to bully you, church, because the daddy that you yell about, the daddy that you praise, the God who promised he would never leave you, the God who apparently appears to allow evil, allows you to be persecuted, allows people to walk in school and kill children, I don't know where he's at. So the world has told the church, sit down, be quiet, Because your daddy lied to you. Ain't somebody going to help me preach this morning? Uh, but the Bible tells me <laughs> that God promised us mm, that I will never leave you nor forsake you. Well, this is what I want you to know what we are at. In the birth of the church in Acts chapter 4, the devil attempted to treat the church, the first century church, as if they were fatherless. <laughs> yes, they did. And they were doing miracles and they were healing in Jesus' name, yeah. preaching in Jesus' name. Yeah. Folk was getting pulled out of wheelchairs yeah. in Jesus' name. <laughs> and the world said, if we don't do something about this church who is still in its infant stage, who is just a few days old, a few weeks old, if we don't kill it before it grows up, if we don't kill it before it realizes that it has not left them, yeah. we better deal with them. So in this text, at chapter 4 or 5, we have some murderers trying to kill the first century church <laughs> as if daddy had left them. Let me read it to you. Acts 4, chapter, verse 15. They had done some miracles. They had healed a man. And seeing the man had been healed, verse 14, standing with them, they had nothing to say in reply. But when they had ordered them to go outside the council, they began to confer with one of them, saying, What shall we do with these men? For the fact that it's noteworthy, miracles have taken place through them, and his parents are all who live in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But in order that they may not spread further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more in the name. Oh, the world 
came and made a deal with the church. What deal? They said, I'll tell you what we'll do. We're going to let you preach. Yeah. We're going to let you give out food boxes. Yeah. We're going to let you canvas. We can let you have church. We're not going to stop you. We got one deal that we want to make with you. Because we know daddy ain't there. We won't stop nothing y'all do on this one condition as long as you don't do it in his name. Huh? You can pray in school, just not in Jesus' name. You can give food to the homeless, just don't do it in Jesus' name. I know you heard me preach this and I'm going to keep preaching. The, 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 they have scared the church back into a closet and told us, don't use your name. Well, when I use his name, that's how I know that he's my daddy. How are you trying to tell me to take a generic name? When I call his name out, it proves who I was born of. He said, they said, no, I want to make a deal with you, church. We won't stop nothing y'all doing. Nothing. Go ahead and have church. Go ahead and kick over chairs and have altar calls. We don't care what you do. But I tell you what. Don't use that name. As if we can be bullied. You know, when we were out there yesterday, y'all didn't see this, but Sister Leslie was standing there just as proud. I got her on tape. I said, I'm going to get this. Because we had saints outside. White saints. Black saints. Just mixed all in together. All right. On the sign. Yeah. Got signs up. Talking about honk if you love Jesus. <laughs> you ain't saying nothing. There was so much noise out there for me. We was like, hey, there's more some folk that love Jesus than we got. But there weren't enough ones for me. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Because everybody should have been honking as well. I'm concerned. But, but at the end of the day, when I left to come in, Pastor Ben, our fellow pastor of the other church, he said, man, someone drove up on me right when you left. And he said, I think it was one of your neighbors. And she said, I'm making a sign that says, honk if you love donuts. <laughs> Watch this. They might be in the room, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm not scared of donuts. Hello. She said, Y'all are out here honking in this neighborhood. Y'all are against abortion. Yeah. I said, yeah, we love Jesus. <laughs> we didn't come to raise a political party, but he's against abortion. Yeah. <laughs> he said he came that you may have life and life more. Y'all don't know if you preach. So she said, well, y'all are stirring up trouble. And I was like, how can you to come get me? <laughs> Good night. 
tell them death ain't left us. If you see this thing, tell your pastor, happy Father's Day. Daddy ain't left us. We're going to preach in the name. We're going to heal in the name. We're going to bless the name. We're going to worship the name. We're going to respect the name. Because at the name of Jesus, every demon must bow and come to rest in Jesus. Like we're going to get scared. Because someone going to bully us back in there. Now, my daddy's at home. I almost feel like preaching. But I'm going to be good. I'm going to be good. It's quite obvious. They ain't got a lot of sense. Don't make me make it worse on myself. I said, Brother B, you didn't come get me? I was driving home. I was like, it was probably good. <laughs> I, I believe my God is providentially sorry. He probably had me walk away on purpose. He said, you work there. You got to come back tomorrow. I don't want you to work the place down already. <laughs> Go home. Sip on some water. Cool off. I'm sitting there like that. I'm with us. Yeah, they know. You know I'm crazy. He said, it ain't time for crazy. Folk need to be saved. <laughs> so what, what happened was they, they, they tried to make a deal with him. And, and, and then uh, and in the text, uh, uh, they, the disciples, they, they, they was trying to reason with them. Yeah. And this is what I want to ask the world. Because they asked the disciples, you can keep preaching, just don't do it in the name. Yeah. Okay? But then when you get down to verse about 19, they come and they are in front of the council, which is representing the world. Yeah. And they say, I want you to tell me. Which makes more sense? <laughs> Should we obey? Let's see here. I wish I'm talking to somebody. Should we obey God? Or should we bow down to Caesar? Should I obey God or Bible? God or my government? God or politics? I, I, in other words, the disciples had put the question out and wanted the world to reason with them because they was asking them to do something so crazy. They said, tell us what makes more sense to you. <laughs> Y'all like what I'm preaching. Should I obey God? The God who put Mount Rainier in his place. Or should I obey the man who was made by the God? I should obey. You tell me more. Should I obey God who sits on the circle of the earth? I should obey man who only lives about 70 years and dies. You tell me which one I should obey. I, I need some help saying to Should I obey God who told Joe, I know. Is in the snow path. I should have obeyed man who has no clue and took over thousands of years just to find out that the earth was round. Should I obey God or should I obey man, the God who formed me in my mama's womb, the God who sees all and knows all, the God who can't be stuck, the God who does whatever he wants to do, the God who wrapped himself in flesh and walked around. Says, hold on, cancel. 
drugs now. There's no other name I can call out and prostitutes get married. There's no other name I can call out and racist folk love folk that don't look like them. There's no other name I can call out. He didn't leave us another name which we can preach in. He didn't leave us an option B. He didn't leave us a backup plan. So there is no other name in about which men may be saying. So what you are asking me to do, I cannot do because only Thank you. 
we may have left.